Hello, 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 how are you? Hello, 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 how are you? Hello friends, welcome to Circle Time in Miss April's classroom. My name is Miss April, what's your name? Thank you for sharing. I'm so glad you joined me today. We have a lot of things planned for circle time. Let's start with our weather song. Can you sing it with me? Great. What is the weather, the weather, the weather? What is the weather, the weather today? Is it sunny? Is it cloudy? Is it rainy? Is it snowy? What? Is the weather, the weather today? Okay, friends, it's time to look out of our weather window so we can see what the weather is today. Ready? Look, what's the weather like today? Oh no, it's rainy. Can you help me make a weather sentence? Great. First, we need to pick out a picture that represents a rainy day. Which picture shows a rainy day? If you pointed to this picture, I agree. I see dark clouds with rain coming down. This is definitely a rainy day picture. Let's add it to our weather sentence. Okay, can you help me read the sentence? Great. The weather is rainy. Good, we'll read it one more time. The weather is rainy. Perfect, you just read today's weather sentence. Now, we need to get Brittany and Bobby Bear dressed for a rainy day. Do you think you can help? Great. Let's start with their top. Hmm, what should Brittany and Bobby wear on a rainy day? Should they wear a raincoat or a t-shirt? If you said the raincoat, I agree. On a rainy day, I want to protect my clothes from getting wet. If I just have a t-shirt on, I'll get all wet from the rain. But the raincoat will stop the water from going through my clothes. Let's put the raincoat on Brittany and a raincoat on Bobby. A raincoat for Brittany Bear and a raincoat for Bobby Bear. Perfect. Now, let's choose the bottoms they should wear. Should Brittany and Bobby Bear wear shorts or rain pants? Remember, it's a rainy day. If you chose the rain pants, I agree. If I wear shorts, the water will go right through my clothes and I'll be all wet. But rain pants will protect me, will protect my clothes from getting wet. The rain pants stop the water from going through. Let's put the rain pants on Brittany Bear and Bobby Bear. Okay. Rain pants for Brittany and rain pants for Bobby. Perfect. Now all they need are shoes. What kind of shoes should Brittany and Bobby wear on a rainy day? If you said rain boots, I agree. Let's put rain boots on Brittany and Bobby Bear. Ooh, they have yellow rain boots. It matches their yellow raincoat and their yellow rain pants. Yellow rain boots for Brittany and Bobby. Perfect. Oh wait, they're missing something. What are they going to use to protect their head from getting all wet outside? Yes, they need an umbrella. Let's give Brittany and Bobby Bear an umbrella. An umbrella for Brittany and an umbrella for Bobby. There we go. Now they're ready for the rainy day. Great job, friends. Thank you so much for helping. 
Now it's time to talk about our letter of the week. Do you remember what this week's letter is? It's the letter T. We've been talking about the letter T all week long. Do you remember what sound it makes? If you said the T sound, you are correct. The letter T makes the T sound. Can you say it with me? T. Perfect. Today, we are going to look at different pictures. You'll give me a thumb up if the picture starts with the letter T or a thumb down if it doesn't. That means we need to pay close attention to the sound that we hear at the beginning. We learned earlier this week that tiger starts with the T sound, meaning it starts with the letter T. Listen, tiger. Did you hear the T sound? Good. So we would give that picture a thumb up. Are you ready to try it? Perfect. Let's look at our first picture. Ooh, it's a tomato. Does tomato start with the letter T? Do you hear the T sound at the beginning? Listen, tomato. If you have your thumb up, you are correct. Tomato has the T sound at the beginning. That means it starts with the letter T. Great job. Let's try another one. Look, it's a snake. Does snake start with the letter T? Do you hear the T sound at the beginning? Listen, snake. If you have your thumb down, you are correct. Snake does not start with the letter T. I don't hear the T sound at the beginning. I hear the S sound. Listen, snake. Did you hear the S sound? Good. Okay, let's take a look at one more picture. Oh, look, it's a telescope. Does telescope start with the letter T? Do you hear the T sound at the beginning of telescope? Listen, telescope. If you have your thumb up, you are correct. Telescope does start with the letter T. I heard the T sound at the beginning. Listen, telescope. Did you hear it? Awesome. Great work, friends. You helped me figure out if the picture started with the letter T or if it didn't. Now it's time to practice writing the letter T. Let's practice writing on the actual letter and then we'll practice on the board. So we'll need our magic finger. Great. We'll start with our uppercase T. When we write an uppercase T, we start at the top. We make a straight line down. Good. Then we pick up our pencil, we go back to the top on the side and make a straight line across. We go all the way back to the top. Let's try that one more time. Make a straight line down. Good. Go back to the top on the side and make one line across. Awesome. That's our uppercase T. Let's see if we can practice writing it on the board. If you have paper and pencil, you can practice with me. If you don't, just use your magic finger again. Ready? Let's practice the uppercase T. We make a straight line down. Good. Go back to the top, to the side, and make a straight line across. Awesome. That's our uppercase T. Let's do it one more time. Make a straight line down. Good. Go back to the top on the side and make a straight line across. You did it. You wrote an uppercase T. Now let's practice our lowercase T. We'll practice on the letter first and then we'll write it on the side. Ready? For our lowercase T, it's also a tall letter. So we start at the top. We make a straight line down. Good. This time we go to the side 
but we go back to the middle of the line and make a straight line across. So we have a straight line down, go to the middle on the side and make a straight line across. Perfect. Now let's write it on the board. Practice with me. If you don't have paper and pencil, just use your magic finger. Follow along. A straight line down. Now go to the middle, to the side, and a straight line across. Perfect. Let's do it one more time. A straight line down. Pick up your pencil. Go to the middle on the side and make a straight line across. Awesome. Sometimes you might see a lowercase t with a curve at the bottom. That's just one way we can write it. So you might see this. A straight line down with a little curve and then a line across in the middle. These are both lowercase t's. People write them different ways and it's okay. As long as you write it one of these ways, it's a lowercase t. Okay, and now that we practice writing the letter T, it's time to review our numbers of the week. This week, we've been reviewing the numbers one through five. Let's see how many apples are on our tree today. Can you count the apples with me? Perfect. Ready? I like to point when I count so I can keep track of which ones I've already counted. We count each apple one time. Ready? One, two, three, four. How many apples do I have? What was the last number I said? Four. Well, we have four apples. Let's count one more time. One, two, three, four. Awesome. Can you help me pick out which number is the number four? Hmm. Which number represents our four apples? Can you point to it? If you pointed to this number, you are correct. This is the number four. Great job, friends. Okay, today we are going to do another number activity. Today, I'm going to show you a number. It'll be either one, two, three, four, or five. And then you have to help me count that many turtles and put them in the box. You think you can do it? Perfect. Let's look at our first number. Oh, what number is this? It's the number five. Can you help me put five turtles in the box? Perfect. Count with me. Remember, we'll stop when we hear the number five. One, two, three, four, five. Great job. We have five turtles in the box. Okay, let's try another one. Ooh, what number is this? It's the number two. Can you help me put two turtles in the box? Great, count with me. One, two. Perfect, we have two turtles in our box. Okay, let's look at our last number. What number is this? It's the number three. Let's put three turtles in the box. Count with me. One, two, three. Perfect. Now we have three turtles in the box. Great job, friends. You helped me put the right amount of turtles in the box based on the number we saw at the top. Awesome job. Now it's time to review our color of the week. Do you remember what this week's color is? If you said pink, you are correct. Our color of the week is pink. This week, we learned our pink song. Today, we are going to be color detectives. We're going to look for objects that are pink. And you can circle them or point to them with your magic finger. 
Are you ready? There's going to be three things that are pink. Help me find the three objects that are pink. Wow, look at all the different colors. Can you find the three things that are pink? Oh, look, it's a pink bow. Did you see the pink bow? Perfect. What else do you see that's pink? Oh, look, it's pink balloons. Did you see the pink balloons? Fantastic. Hmm, there's one more thing that's pink. Can you find it? It's pink cotton candy. Great job, Prince. You found the three things that were pink. Awesome. Now it's time to move on to our shape of the week. Do you remember what this week's shape is? It's a pentagon. Can you say pentagon? Perfect. Do you remember how many sides and corners a pentagon has? Let's count them to see. We'll start with the sides. One, two, three, four, five. How many sides? Yes, there are five. Did you say five? Awesome. Let's see how many corners. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. How many corners does it have? It has five corners. A pentagon has five sides and five corners. Today, we are going to practice writing or drawing a pentagon. When we draw it, we have to make sure we have five sides and five corners. This one is a little trickier to draw. So first, we'll trace it and then we'll draw it in the air. Ready? When you draw a pentagon, you make a straight line, a straight diagonal line. Good. Then you can make another diagonal line down. Perfect. Make a straight line at the bottom. Good. Make a diagonal line up back towards the middle. Mm -hmm. And another diagonal line up back to the center at the top. Awesome. Like I said, this one is a little trickier. So just do your best. Let's draw it in the air. Ready? Start at the top. Good. Make a diagonal line down. Perfect. Make another diagonal line down, but going back towards the center. Not all the way. Good. Make a diagonal, I mean, a straight line at the bottom. There you go. A diagonal line up, back towards the middle. And another diagonal line up towards the center where we started. Perfect. I'll draw one on the board. And you can use your magic finger to follow along with me. Or you can draw it yourself if you have a paper and pencil. Now, like I said, it's a little difficult to draw. So we'll just do our best. We make a diagonal line down. Good. Then another diagonal line down. Straight line across. A diagonal line back up towards the middle. And then another one right back where we started. There we go. This one looks a little silly, but it's still a pentagon because it has five sides and five corners. Great job, friends. Thank you so much for helping me draw a pentagon. Hey, that's it for our circle time board. We've learned so many things this week with our circle time board. And now it's time to take a brain break. After, we, after our brain break, it'll be time for our daily message. We're going to be learning more about the market. So press the pause button, take a brain break, and come right back for our daily message. Hello friends, welcome back to Circle Time. Did you enjoy your brain break? Awesome. Well, now it's time to read our daily message. Our daily message is going to tell us what we're learning about today. 
Let's read today's message. Ready? Food is sorted into different departments at the grocery store. Okay, let's read it one more time. This time, you read with me. I'll read and you can repeat. Ready? Food is sorted into different departments at the grocery store. Awesome! Great reading. Before we talk about our message, we're going to be letter detectives. Do you remember what our letter of the week is? That's the letter we're going to look for. It makes the t sound. Do you remember the name of our letter? If you said the letter T, you are correct. This week, we've learned all about the letter T. It makes the t sound. We have an uppercase T and a lowercase T. Let's put them on the board so we remember what they look like. And then we'll look for our letter T. First, we need to put on our detective goggles. Perfect. Okay, can you find a letter T in our message? There are several of them. See if you can find one or two. Ready? Hmm, I'm looking for a T. T makes the T sound. I found a few of them. Did you find a T? Great! Let's follow along our message and see if we can find all of the T's together. We have a lot of T's in our message today. Let me get our mark, my marker and my pointer. Ready? We'll start at the beginning. That's at the top on the left. And we move to the right, just like we read. We're looking for the letter T. Hmm, I'm looking for a T. A T is a tall letter. It's a straight line down with a line at the top or a line in the middle. Oh look, here's a T. Let's underline it. Is this an uppercase T or a lowercase T? If you said a lowercase T, you are correct. It is a lowercase T. Let's see if we can find more T's. Stopped right here, looking for the letter T. Hmm. Oh look, here is another T. Let's underline it. This is another lowercase T. Let's keep looking. We're at the end of our line, so we need to go down one line and back to the beginning. Ready? On the left. We're moving to the right, looking for the letter T. This one has curve, a curve at the top. It's not a T. A T doesn't curve at the top. Hmm, I'm looking for a T. Oh look, here's another T. Let's underline it. This T is in the word different. The T is at the end of the word. That means we hear the T sound at the end. Listen, different. Did you hear the T sound at the end? Awesome. Let's see if we can find the other T's. We stopped right here. We're going to keep moving to the right. Hmm, I'm looking for a T. Here's a T. Let's underline it. It's another lowercase t. Let's keep looking. Hmm, I'm looking for a t. Here's another one. Let's underline this t. Wow, we have two t's in this word. This is the word departments. There are two t's in the word departments. Okay, we're at the end of the line. That means we need to go down one line and back to the left. We're still looking for the letter T. I'm looking. Oh, here's another one. Let's underline it. Wow, all we found are lowercase t's. There are a lot of lowercase t's in our message. We still have two more to find. Ready? I'm looking for a T. Oh, 
Here's another one. It's another lowercase t. We have one more left. Let's see if we can find it. Hmm, we're looking for a T. A T is a tall letter and it makes the T sound. I'm looking, I'm looking. Hmm, oh, here it is. Let's underline it. Is this an uppercase T or a lowercase T? If you said a lowercase T, you are correct. Wow, friends, we found a lot of T's in our message. Let's count them to see how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The last number we said was eight. That means there are eight T's in our message. Let's read our message one more time so we know what we're talking about today. Ready? Food is sorted into different departments at the grocery store. Hey, I saw the word sorted. We've sorted things before. We put things into groups. During our first part of our circle time, we sorted colors before. We put all the red objects in the red circle and we put all the yellow objects in the yellow circle We've sorted a few times. Well, our message says that food is sorted at grocery stores too. It's sorted into different departments. That's our word of the day. Can you say department? Good. A department is an area in a store. That area has items that are just alike or very similar. Just like when we sorted objects of color, we put all the objects that, were, had, that had a red color together, all the objects that had blue colors together. Departments are just kind of like our circles when we sorted. A department is an area, and the things in that area are very similar. They're alike. Let's add the word department to our word wall. Today, we are going to talk about the different departments that we can find in a grocery store. And we'll talk about the types of food that's found in that department. Let's start with the meat department. In a grocery store, there are us there's usually a meat department. What do you think we find in the meat department? If you said meat, you are correct. In the meat department, we can buy chicken or beef, pork, Turkey? Well, we can buy lots of different meats in a meat department. Another department we might find in a grocery store is the dairy department. In the dairy department, we find things that are made from milk. So, of course, we can find milk. We'll even find cheese or yogurt. Things that are made with milk are in the dairy department. Another department we might see in a grocery store is the bakery. Mmm, I like the bakery. It always smells so good by the bakery. In the bakery department, we, we can find fresh bread. And it's usually where they cook lots of sweets, like cake, cupcakes, pies. The bakery department has lots of yummy things. I like the bakery department. Another department in our grocery store is the produce department. The produce, is, the produce department is where we find the fresh fruits and vegetables. That's probably the healthiest part in a grocery store because fruits and vegetables are the most important foods to eat. They give us the, the nutrients we need so we can stay healthy, okay? One more section we can find in a grocery store is the frozen food department. What do you think we find in the frozen food department? We find things that are frozen. We can find frozen fruits and vegetables. Uh, there's also frozen dinners or 
frozen waffles or pancakes. And there's even frozen ice cream in the frozen department. I like ice cream. It's very yummy. Today, we are going to do a sorting activity. We're going to sort food items into different departments. We just learned that there's a meat department, a produce department, a dairy department, a bakery department, a frozen food department. We're going to have lots of different pictures of things we can find in a grocery store. And you're going to tell me what department it belongs to. You think you can help? Perfect. You'll see lots of pictures on the screen. And then you, when I say the name of the picture, you'll tell me what department it belongs in. Ready? Wow, look at all of the food items. Hmm. Our first item is milk. What department would we find milk in? Would we find it in the produce department, the meat department, the bakery, the dairy, or the frozen section? If you said the dairy department, you are correct. We find milk in the dairy department. Let's try another one. Oh, next we have tomatoes. What department can we find tomatoes? Tomatoes are vegetables. We would find it in the produce department. Let's put the tomato in the produce department area. Good. Okay, next we have chicken legs. What department would we find chicken legs in? Will we find it in the produce department, the meat department, the bakery, the dairy, or the frozen section? If you said the meat department, you are correct. Let's put the chicken legs in the meat department. Ooh, next we have fresh, a fresh loaf of bread. Where would we find a fresh loaf of bread? What department? If you said the bakery department, you are correct. Okay, let's see what's next. Oh, it's yogurt. Hmm, which department would we find yogurt in? Yogurt is made from milk. If you said the dairy department, you are correct. Let's put the yogurt in the dairy department. Oh, next we have frozen strawberries. What section would we find frozen strawberries in? If you said the frozen department, you are correct. Let's put the frozen strawberries in the frozen section. Next, we have carrots. What section would we find carrots in? If you said the produce department, you are correct. Okay, we have a few more pictures. Oh look, it's a cake. What department would we find cake in? If you said the bakery, you are correct. Next, we have ice cream. What department would we find ice cream in? Yes, we find ice cream in the frozen department. Oh, we have one more picture. It's steak. Hmm, what department would we find steak in? If you said the meat department, you are correct. Great job, friends. You helped me sort all of the food items. You helped me put, put them in the right department in the grocery store. Grocery stores put foods in different departments because it makes it easier for us to find things. If the food, different types of food were just scattered everywhere, it would be very difficult to shop. It would take us a long time. Being organized is very important in stores. It helps people find what they need quickly so they can get in and out. We learned so many things about the market this week. Next week, we're going to talk about even more things dealing with the market. So make sure you come back next week for Circle Time. Bye. 
Hi everyone, if you enjoyed this video, click the like button. And if you would like to see more videos just like this one from Miss April's Classroom, make sure you click subscribe.